This is Access Door County, and I am your host, Victoria Sarinich. On today's program, we will introduce the Door Association for Home and Community Education, or HCE for short, and learn how the HCE helps build our community together for tomorrow. Today's guests are Terry Madden of Egg Harbor and Little Bit LeClaire, a resident of Jacksonport and president of HCE. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Can you please describe the HCE and the history for us? HCE is probably, it's over 50 years old. We have a, a lot of our uh, members have celebrated their 50th uh, year of, of membership in the club. It was started um, 1963 maybe? Oh, no, 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 um, no. Post-World War II. Post-World War II. So or it's been around for quite a long time. Yes. And why did it get started? It was a means of getting the women who were home um, together to learn new methods of cooking maybe, sewing, knitting, crocheting, a way of um, instruction, mm -hmm. you know, to learn, especially young mothers. Passing on that information that sometimes is pretty hard to find if everybody is just too busy. And maybe, maybe your mother knew how to cook but didn't sew. Correct. And you needed to do both. Right. It was a way for neighborhoods to get together. Um, the, the farmers, the farm mm -hmm. ladies, they would maybe have an afternoon, you know, bring the kids together and just learn a project that, um, that they could all go home and you know, mm -hmm. and use. And use. They had, mm -hmm. I have um, some ladies who were in homemakers eons ago, <laughs> and I have a wood floor in one of my cottages, and they brought me a recipe on how to refinish the wood floor, and they got it out of the Ripples magazine. And they called it a recipe. It was a recipe, and it was linseed oil and varnish and one other, there was two recipes, and one was the linseed oil and varnish, and then there was a third item and I do not recall what that well and this is was. because this was before the day you just went to the store and picked it up or you, mm -hmm. you called mm -hmm. somebody on the phone to do it Door County's a little bit out of the way maybe uh, 50 60 years ago it wasn't so easy to get this uh, these things done for you so we had to come up with ways to do it we ourselves came, you came up with the ways and when HC started homemaker started you had rationing from the wars mm -hmm. and they had to learn how you know I wouldn't have known how to can, and I would have probably gone to one of these um, meetings at somebody's home and learned how to can. Now, is, that, is canning still part of what HCE offers? Yes, yes. it is. Yes. yes. Actually, yes. Pam Peterson has done some programs on canning. Mm -hmm. Through the I think extension. for a couple of years she's done it and has had very good um, turnout. Now, was Homemakers originally part of the UW Extension System, or has it been uh, brought into... Uh, into the fold because I know that's where you can contact them now. Mm -hmm. On this history that we have, um, the Door County Homemaker Council was organized in 1944, okay. and um, it has a and list. And you've got this copy through the extension office because it has okay. it has a list of the past presidents and the agents. And they were as early as 46. So it's been mm -hmm. involved with the university for quite a while. And this history is available for someone if they'd like to read it? Absolutely, it's on the web page. It's on the web page, and that would be the web page of the university extension system? Yes, yes. And uh, so if someone wanted to know more about it, they would go to the University of Wisconsin Extension System for Door County and mm -hmm. they would look for the community programs or the HCE or HCE. the HCE. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Or they could call on the phone and if someone, if they wanted to, I'm sure they could go and pick uh, the history up. Yes. But in addition to learning about the history, what uh, types of education or training or lessons is HCE providing today? I know you have a bookworms program. Right. Yes. yes. We are a volunteer um, mm -hmm. organization. organization that just, um, we do a lot of fundraising. We okay. have, um, we've always done that. Well, tell me about a recent fundraiser. The recent fundraisers we've done are, um, we've Volunteer. done Stitches of Love, 
for, um, well, it's not actually a fundraiser, but we've done projects. Well, that's for, okay. Tell me about Stitches of Love. Yes. It sounds really interesting. We've got Valentine's Day every year. Exactly. But we did um, hats for a number of years. We would sew hats or knit or crochet um, with soft fabric mm -hmm. and um, donate them to the Cancer Society. Oh, for yeah, all those hospital. cancer patients that exactly. might need a little extra covering because yes. it's mm -hmm. that chemo can be tough on the hair. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how do, do you teach your volunteers how to sew and, and that as part of Definitely. the Stitches for Love? Anybody that's interested can come, come to those those meetings. And we've and had there's something we've had for craft everyone. workshops where we've done that. We would when we did a huge Stitches of Love program, we went up to St. John's Church, St. Um, John the Baptist Church in A Harbor, and three or four of us ladies brought our sewing machines. And so you had some some ladies sew, and some ladies can cut and measure and whatever. So we had a little production line going. So we would work on that, and that was with. Um, B. Ehlers mm -hmm. was big on that, mm -hmm. and Terry started that program, mm -hmm. and I used to belong to Lakeside Ladies in Jacksonport, and we did a different project where we took um, old towels, old bath towels, and made um, adult bibs to take to the um, Scandia or... Um, sure, anywhere where it might, they would it might be it. handy. And we made lap yeah. robes for um, people I always chairs. need an adult bib when I'm eating spaghetti <laughs> sauce. I mean, I, absolutely. Yes. So... Uh, and that's part of what, as president, uh, you are responsible for getting some of this organization together, I would think. Well, some well, of it, yes. Mm -hmm. um, this is my first term, so I'm just, oh. this is my first month as president. So. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So now you will be responsible for it, and we will all help yes. by volunteering. Well, I, I would appreciate that greatly. It's, um, it's going to be an interesting, and I've been writing down ideas and different things I would like to do, and... Um, Working with Pam Peterson from the Extension Office has been um, a great benefit to me, and Terry has been a past president, and okay. so, mm -hmm. you know, with the experience that they have and can, can share, and uh, we've got good energy. Good energy. We work and, together. You know, June and Michael, who is here in spirit and, and couldn't make it out on this cold day, um, there's, there's different things that I'm hoping to um, direct the mm -hmm. club into getting in some new areas and get some new energy. Can you can you share that with us? Well, or, I, I don't have all my notes. No, I don't have all. Oh, no worries. <laughs> then let's let's talk about one of the things you did last year, one of the projects, Terry. Well, our one of our major projects is our bookworms program. Okay. And it is. Um, it's actually in partnership with Wisconsin um, Public Television and the, um, the UW Extension Family Living um, Programs um, Education. They provide the leadership for funding and they coordinate the sites and volunteer um, recruitment, you might say. Okay, and you, that's one of the reasons that I thought having both of you here, and actually June Michael, mm -hmm. was because I heard about the Bookworms program. When I was at the county fair last summer, June is quite the promoter <laughs> of the is. HCE yes, and the Bookworms program. And so as, as I was showing our viewers, she, she handed me this little handout with this cute little animal on it, or insect, or worm, worm. worm. bookworm. <laughs> uh, and, and said, you've got to get, participate in this. And I thought, well, one of the ways I can participate is helping people to know about it. So what do you do in the Bookworms program? We actually go into three sites in the Door County area um, and read to the four-year-olds in preschools. Um, we go to the Head Start program in Sturgeon Bay, um, Door County Child Care Center, and then also the Northern Door Child Care Center. Well, that's true. And do you have mm -hmm. specific books? Is that why the partnership and the fundraising? We, go, we have um, eight books that we read to the children during the school year. Um, we go up once a month, mm -hmm. and there's usually um, two or three people that participate, the vol that volunteer to, um, to read. And we take the book, and we actually read it to the kids. It's kind of uh, very fun. I mean, I this love is... It the way I feel. It's just kind of goofy. The illustrations are just and wonderful. And these are three and four-year-olds? Three and four-year-olds, yep. 
We'll read it, we'll ask them questions, we'll do some fun things. They have the work. Um, and it comes with that, yep. There's an activity sheet that if there's time, if mm -hmm. the teachers will allow us to do it, we can um, do um, the activity with them. Um, and then what's very special is they're able to take the book home with them. Oh. And they'll read it to their siblings, they'll have mom read it, and um, you know, it'll just go it down. It helps them bond with reading, which exactly. is so yes. important for learning. And it shows all their, their feelings. I mean, we have a big smelly bear. The snowy day. That would be popular. These are great. Yes. <laughs> In a small, small pond. Yes. And Hugs. how do we hug a porcupine? Isn't oh, that, that might be tough. <laughs> But they're, they're fun books, and the kids love them. They look forward to, you know, most of these ladies, they're older, so, you know, like they the call them grandmas. The grandmas come. Oh, the grandmas yes. are coming to read today. Sure, yes. the grandmas. They look forward to it. So if someone wants to volunteer to do just that program, what would be the steps they would take to contact you, and mm -hmm. what training would they get? It's, you know, we have, we have these brochures. Mm -hmm. They could go to the UW Extension and um, just ask or call. Okay, the, and say they want to volunteer for the Bookworms program. Exactly. And we, then like what read. would happen? Would they have to meet at a, is there a specific day of the month you would meet to ex give them some training so they'd know what to do? Yep. Yeah. They, you know, we explain to them what, what the book is. Um, you know how to deal with the kids. Oh, okay. Um, you know, so the you would arrange are very a, you good. would arrange a meeting with your volunteers in a group or individually, depending mm -hmm. on how many. How, how would and then you would present. This is what we do, and show them how to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it only takes you know probably 15 minutes, and you're finished. Normally, you drive longer than. <laughs> Is, is part of the, of the organization is arranging those dates when you will read to the children? Because I imagine the day school or the preschool will want to they have want some advance notice. Time. Yes. You bet. Yes. Uh -huh. And then if you have a weather day like this, I mean, you have to reschedule. Sure. And we used to have, when we were in, when I, we had our Jacksonport Club, we had a specific day and time in the morning that we'd drive up there once a month. And read, and you'd get your your books from the extension office, and you go up there and and read, read to the children, leave the activity sheets. If you couldn't get time to um, work with them, they'd go home. Um, one of the projects that our club did in Egg Harbor, where the Harborettes was, we made book bags for all the kids, and we made. Oh, I think it was yeah, at least hundred. Yeah, it was Carrie over got 100. this, this uh, fabric um, samples and. We brought our sewing machines to Terry's house and we sat down and some ladies cut and some ladies sewed and we oh, made it was up. a great project. It was a good yep. project. And so all those little kids when the ladies would go up to the read would get a book bag. So oh. they'd have a book bag to carry their, mm -hmm. their books mm -hmm. home in. So how did these volunteers I mean, we know they contact through the UW Extension, and then you may have a phone call, or you send them an email, or something, and you say we're going to make book bags over at Terry's house. We did this as a club project. Right. Oh, okay. As our as our club project, and right. then we did we had made so many. I mm -hmm. believe, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, that we gave some to the Head Start ladies to mm -hmm. to give because right. I mean, so every year, year there's a new group of four-year-olds coming through, so you sure. can always make the bakes. So a, uh, as a club project, and you mean the uh, the HCE club? This was our, there's eight clubs in HCE. In oh, Door okay. County, in Door County. Mm -hmm. So they're scattered throughout the county in Southern Door, Northern Door, and mm -hmm. Sturgeon Bay. And each club picks their own pet projects or works on oh, things. And right. Terry being uh, bookworms, coordinator and she was given this fabric, you know, and did a little brainstorming, made up this bag and showed it to us and we're going, well, oh, yeah, we're in. This, yeah. Is, this is easy because I always say we're a do-gooder club because we're a service organization and we're supposed to go out and, in mm -hmm. my mind, help the community in, in ways that we can. Sure, that's what it says, and build our community together for tomorrow. Yes. This, uh, the Bookworms program is, you know, very costly when we're constantly looking for ways to make money. Mm -hmm. And um, if anybody wants to sponsor children, um, we're always looking for that too. It 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 costs about twenty six dollars per child, per child. Per for year. the for the eight books 
for the, an eight book series. Eight book series, okay. yes. And typically, mm -hmm. how many children, do you know how many children you might reach? We read, um, the last few years, we've read over to over 80 children. Okay. In the, so that, in the three sites. Mm -hmm. And that's 80 children a year? Yes. So that's 80 yes. children a year times 26. So that gives people an idea of the kind of funds that are necessary to support this. Exactly. Now, you've done some fundraisers. I think we mentioned it a little earlier, but we're mm -hmm. going to circle back. Um, do you cook and sell cookies? I mean, that's always popular. Or we hot did. Or hot on <laughs> a cold ago, day. That's no, what we did. We did. We did. Um, when I first started, I had joined HC 15 years ago. Um, they had just started the... Um, book rooms and we had a, a scholarship for we had a scholarship fund and then we had to start with the book rooms fund and I can remember at Jacksonport we would go to the town hall and bring in all of our ingredients and we would have a day of baking and then each club was responsible for I don't know how many dozen cookies and you brought them into Sturgeon Bay on the day of the Christmas walk the the big Christmas parade mm -hmm. and we had to go around and sell those and you'd be standing by Harmon's trying to sell cookies and we might have started with hot chocolate or and walk down the street so walk down the street with a box of cookies with a box of cookies <laughs> trying to sell you want to say that just reminds me of the you know the parochial school the children carry in the box of chocolates I gotta sell my chocolates for exactly. the school. Yeah, it was except the adults are doing it here mm-hmm and I'm not sure then um B. Ehlers was was one of the big um Proponents or advocates? Advocates, yes, of, of bookworms. And then um, Yonkers started their community days. Yes. So then we got into doing that, and we'd have to sign up for so many hours to sit there and man that. The table the where tables. at Yonkers. And for yes. people that don't know that, you want to explain what the community yes. days is? Oh. Um, they sell a little there were coupons, coupons, right? There were, yes, right. There were, coupon. I think twice a year they twice. have. Yes. They have these sales. And a certain percentage went into all of the um, uh, different groups that so were nonprofit okay. groups, and you had to go and work and sell the tickets, sell the. Oh, so you were the person at the, the door. When I'd go in on a sale day, on one of those coupon days, mm -hmm. there's someone sitting at a table lot, well, yes. sort of like this, yes. and they've got the coupon book. And yes. I'd buy the coupon books for mm -hmm. $5 or $10, and the coupon book would be worth as much as the money I just gave you. Yes. And that money would go to the organization. Exactly. Yes. Ah, the other thing that. we started in uh, recent years are the brat fries mm -hmm. Ooh. at Econo. And we've also oh that outdoor in the, the parking lot. Parking, yes. Okay, so we'd see we would see this up at the the, the HCE yeah, we had our, logo our, up there. We had our mm -hmm. flag up there. Sure. I've never worked. I've only worked one. <laughs> and I didn't want work. I did not work at Addy County. I worked one at Wellsings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because they had the brat fries up there also. So and that's like you that's, get fifty That's good profit. It's, it's yes. good profit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Econo likes doing those things. You yes, see them do. up at yes. the. Yeah. Outside all that. We won't see them in the winter, but no. And there's there's a core of people that work that Econo one that have been just, you know, um, they've been very the helpful. Backbone. Yes, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. There, there's been a core of, of husbands and wives, and uh, or the wives with their husbands helping them do the grilling, and and uh, very fortunate to have that group and that that strength and endurance to do it. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, are there any? date time, or time specific things that we need to tell our viewers that at certain times of the year you're looking for volunteers to sign up we're always, we're looking, always looking for, for new, new members new members mm -hmm. new mm -hmm. members yes um, trying to get new members to um, to teach to instruct to share uh, share gifts and talents um, mm -hmm. There's so much out there to learn, and so few people left to teach some of these skills, some of these heritage skills, be it knitting or crocheting or tatting or mm -hmm. um, harding. I, I'm more into the crafty things, but... And, and it's an older organization. These mm -hmm. ladies that are involved, they're, you know, they're getting up there in years, and yes. we need, we need young, young gals that want to come together and... Um, you know, just do a monthly meeting. Monthly, you know, just we, meet for a couple hours. And yes, we do a, a dinner every every time we meet. We do a, mm -hmm. a luncheon or a dinner at at for our ever, club for our, for our mm -hmm. specific Egg Harbor Club. For the and, okay, for the Egg Harbor Club uh, that's yes. part of the HCE. Yes. So right. the, the fellowship is um, very strong. 
it's such an opportunity to learn. When I was a young mother and had just moved back to Door County, I wanted to learn some skills. I wanted more skills in bread making and um, different areas, and I wanted to learn strudel. When I was first married, I listened to, I looked in my cookbook and said, well, what do you do with a tablecloth? <laughs> I, could, I couldn't fathom. We had a lady in our club, Catherine Miller, who was, she was a wonderful person and I was so glad I met her and she was in Jacksonport and she did a strudel demonstration at her home. And you'd take the table and you would snap and it would roll. Flip the, it. And flip it and roll with all the filling in it. And I thought, that's why you need a tablecloth, but in a was, recipe, yeah. Yes. In your in your list of ingredients, <laughs> and you had the tablecloth. You're I, like, I could, oh, I don't know I how I'm going to chew that. I, yes. I, I couldn't figure it out. I could not. I could, and I'm so visual that I needed that mm -hmm. demonstration. And she would do these demonstrations at the courthouse, at the um, old courthouse in the room, the government, the, the government mm -hmm. building, out with the kitchen. And everybody showed up for bees demonstrations, be it on canning or strudel making or Knitting, she was a wealth of information and had such a gift for sharing her talents. So we don't want to lose some of these no. these talents exactly. and some of these abilities, and we want to make sure the next generation knows how to do it. And it's one thing to watch the YouTube, and we all love YouTube, you thank you, you viewers, <laughs> but it's yes. another thing to be there and do it hands on. Well, it, and I think what's going to happen in, in this, yes, they all have YouTube, but when you watch um, and, and observe people now, they all have their phones. And you're not going to learn anything unless they stick their phones in a basket at the door so they can actually concentrate on what is being instructed and, sure. and taught. Because, Absolutely. I mean, when we started home, you brought your young kids. And you had, you know, our mothers used to coffee clutch and, and do all that. And you, the kids went from house to house to house. And you knew all your neighbors, you knew your, your um, friends, and you helped. If you were learning how to make curtains or window shades or if you were going to make a lampshade, finish your floor, bake, there was always somebody who mm -hmm. had that skill and that talent to teach. And this is one thing that I would like to get back into Homemakers, um, mm -hmm. HCE, and to make sure we don't lose that talent those right. talents those that knowledge that knowledge people, doesn't disappear yes. people don't know their neighbors anymore they don't know this their is a great way to get everyone involved sure. and, yeah. and that's one of the things we're hoping to do with access door county is to try and reintroduce these subjects that are part of our community mm -hmm. using a bit of modern technology mm -hmm. to tell people about the things that they don't want to forget exactly. and yeah. so we're hoping that we can reach a lot of people and if we uh, so HCE, or Homemakers, is the parent organization for connecting with all eight clubs. Is that correct? Correct. And if anyone lives in Door County, in any part of Door County, they can go to HCE at the UW Extension Office via the website or the phone. Mm -hmm. And then they can ask and say, I live in Egg Harbor. Does it, is there an Egg Harbor group? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And they will put you in touch with the Egg Harbor group, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. happens to be Terry, as well as a little bit, but right. it's, it's Terry's right. is that, and you've got the whole bunch Well, now. I also have our club now, too. <laughs> oh, and we you've have got great clubs. Yes, yes, she's the president I've of, taken over president the of, of the Harborettes. Of, of the Harborettes. Yes. Okay, yes. so <laughs> you've, you've got it all then. Oh, this year, yes. Um, the other thing is we've had some new clubs form. We've had the Door County Hispanics have, have formed a club with Imelda de Chambray as their president and um, trying to get the Hispanic community more involved. Mm -hmm. And we also have another club that was formed and it's called Country Roses. And these are some very special girls at Sunshine House and they had a different club called Sunflowers. Mm -hmm. Sunflowers. Mm -hmm. And they're... Um, very enthusiastic and they enjoy having this time and they have one young lady who is a little dynamo behind that club forming up again because she'd been in sunflowers and she really enjoyed that and missed that mm -hmm. um, learning and Pam Peterson has been a great benefactor to that club and in um, as an advisor to them um, mm -hmm. I've gone and helped them a few times and okay. you've gone and helped them a few times and Mary Ellen Smith has helped. And it's 
you know, we meet once a month unless we have something that we have to meet more. So is that the Harborettes meet once a month or the whole parent organization? Each club meets once a month. They have a date set. Okay, and how would people find mm -hmm. out what that date is and where? Actually, Jadine Hansen at the Extension Office has mm -hmm. that list. Oh, that's so you, wonderful. Mm -hmm. It gives the president of the club a phone number and it gives the day um, of the month. If it's the first Monday of the month or the second Tuesday of the month, each club has its own. And where mm -hmm. it's at. And where so, it's at. So if someone is, that's watching would want to get in touch and just learn a little bit more, they would call the UW Extension Office and they would ask about the the HCE program and they would give their location and they would say can we find out where the local club is meeting mm -hmm. exactly. and when yes so that would be the next step for any potential volunteers because you'd like right. to get some more volunteers more uh, members, you've got a lot absolutely. of mm -hmm. more members you've got a lot of good ideas mm -hmm. is there any cost to a member there's dues but it's that's a fifteen dollar yearly due that goes okay. part of it goes it, to state Part it's pretty county. nominal for people that want yes, to. Exactly. That's just yes. a, what a dollar ten a month or yeah, something. It's, I mean, it's, it's, it's nothing. Right. What yeah. you need is the time. Somebody that's the able time. to give uh, at least for the monthly meeting to find out what's going on, and then a little time to participate in one of the activities. Mm -hmm. Some of the activities, you know, I'm, I'm only more familiar with our club and what we've done. Um, in years past, we'd gone to a uh, had a car care class for our ladies in our club, and we went up to A and M Motors up in Liberty Grove, and learned on um, when you need to change your tires, or how much air pressure, or when to change the oils, be it the hydraulics. And we had a whole car a little care maintenance class yes. Yes. for the basics that you women. don't have to go and spend a, an unknown amount of money mm -hmm. to have someone else do it if you can check it yourself. Yes, it was a it was a great great class. Some of the other things that we've had are um, living wills. We've had instruction on living wills on how to plan a funeral. Um, so there what are craft days? Yeah, craft so, days. So what mm -hmm. you're saying is HCE is a starting point for a large number of activities that are involved with your daily life. Absolutely. And it's a good place if you want to start somewhere. If you have a question about something, you might start with calling HCE. HCE. Right. And the extension office has been. Um, They're very supportive. Well, supportive, yeah. but they do so much work for us mm -hmm. um, in the office. In, uh, well, sure, because mm -hmm. they have those those clerical abilities they and, and they and can they coordinate that yes. and standardize that and get the mailings out. Yes, and, and, and Pam inst Pam has a lot of classes that she has instructed mm -hmm. instructed on in um, on heart health, different cooking with her, the, you know, the family living agent. It, it's just so many things tie in with home ec, mm -hmm. homemakers and um, HCE. It's it, the extension office. It's it's invaluable the time and energy and the effort that they, and the support that they give our organization. Well, we really appreciate that, that Pam Peterson and the UW Extension Office for supporting the home and community education. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there anything else that you would like to share with us before we uh, close the program for today? Anything you, know you want to repeat? On bookworms, how many books did Pam say that we she had sent out something. There were how many books that we read or had given out? Oh, 10, over the years? Yeah. This is our 15th year um, reading. Uh, on bookworms. On bookworms, yep. Well, I I, the count. I'm sure. There was 10,000 10, books that okay. we have given out, and I'm thinking seven, 700 children? Up. Oh, 900? Well, 1,200. <laughs> We'll keep going. 1,200 <laughs> 1200 okay. children that we have read to in 15 years. All right. Well, mm -hmm. we really appreciate you taking the time to be with us today at Access Store County and also for your time with right, thank the you. Home Thanks so and much Community for having Education. Us here. It's been and a pleasure meeting you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Little Bit and Terry. And you've been watching Access Store County with your host, Victoria Serenich the Home and Community Education Program at the UW Extension Office. This is Access Store County.
your TV channel in Sevastopol, 986. Thank you.